Welcome to the Kitchen Army, the episode number two. Welcome to the Kitchen Army. My name is Nikki Four, and we're interviewing Mr. Jordan Sclair today. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time, Jordan. Pleasure to be here. Yes, amazing restaurants in, in the middle of Soho in London, Chotomate. Beautiful food, amazing. Um, the first question. Um, the concept of uh, Nikkei cuisine has been introduced uh, by Toshiro Konishi, which, is, which was the first top Japanese chef to have impact on Peruvian cuisine. Um, he's uh, credited for invention of tiradito dish, apparently, according to culturetrip.com. Um, you and Michael Paul are forming Nikkei Boys, and I wonder why did you use Nikkei as part of your branding and what Nikkei Boys are about? Well, the Nikkei Boys is, is about Nikkei cuisine, you know, okay. because, because, and we are boys. Sure. So the name was quite simple, but yeah. the, the, Nikkei, the, the, Nikkei love, the love for Nikkei food came around when, um, you know, Kurt Dieser, the founder of Chotomate, took us to Peru okay. and toured us all around Lima. And we ate all the food and I already had a knowledge in Japanese food. Because you worked in Nobu, for example. Yeah, I was the chef at Nobu and I opened Aqua and, and a few other Asian places. So sure. my, my knowledge of Japanese food was, was quite high. So then when you go to learn the Peruvian side of it by tra traveling, you know, four weeks, around Lima and eating in every restaurant, That's every incredible. market, and we went in um, festival season. Okay. Um, so it was, a, you know, the best time. So at that time, without me really knowing, I was really falling in love with Nikkei cuisine. I'm not surprised, because if it is what, what, what we tried today, uh, yeah. it, it's incredible, just the combination of flavors. I agree. Um, and I imagine you want to try and promote cuisine um, in Nikkei in London. Just yeah, so. I think that Nikkei cuisine in London should be as, as popular as someone saying, I'm going for a Chinese, I'm going for an Indian. I agree. I'm going for a Nikkei. I agree. I agree that the, the, the combination of flavors, just richness is just incredible. Um, and now another of the sort of innovative concepts in London is pokey which again, uh, you and Kurt are pioneers of. What triggered the idea of, of starting Pokey in, 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 in Black Roll? Kurt, again. Again. <laughs> yeah. Basically Kurt. You he know, found he, this island in the middle I don't know what's of... wrong with Kurt, but I think he's more <laughs> of a psychic than uh, and a magician, more than a restaurateur, because he says, uh, you know, two years before something's gonna come out, he's like, he we does need it. to do Pokey. We need to stop what you're doing. Go and study what poke is. We need to do poke. So his idea was to do poke. So then what does he do? Being Kurt, flies me off to Hawaii. For another four weeks. And so we went to Hawaii. Actually, we went to LA yeah. and Hawaii, you know, yeah. because there, there's a lot of poke restaurants in LA. Yeah. And that was on the way to Hawaii. So then he took me to Hawaii and we did the whole poke tour. We were in about 30 to 40 different poke restaurants, but not even. They're not really restaurants, they're more like pokes everywhere. You, we had a tour guide to tell us where to go, and it was in petrol stations, just stick, anywhere. stick your head through a hole in the wall at the beach and order a poke. You know, they're not really sit in restaurants. You know, you go around, there's poke shops in car parks, outside shopping malls. Almost as a sandwich. We've been to all of, of them, yeah. It's like the fast food. Amazing. It's the surfer dude's food. Amazing. And, and then the flavors, you know, that we saw out there, actually, we learned what poke was and, and the interpretation of what was really a classic poke. Yeah. But then, you know, me and Kurt being together, doing what we do, we then added all the evolution of poke and all the new flavors that you get at Black Row. You had to adapt it. Yeah, to, we, to we had to add it 100%. to, we had to take it even further than just poke. Of course. Because it's not just Hawaiian taste poke. We, we have our respect for the poke on the menu, the original poke with the original yeah. poke sauce, which is really just more of a, a soy sauce and chili and sesame taste. But then you so have a journey. Then you have a journey with all the other pokes of our modern and new style of pokes of with burnt tomatoes and smoked sauces and different kinds of chilies. I'd love to try it. I'd love to try, try it. it. You have to try it. I will. It. Um, now, in terms of, because uh, uh, pokey is one thing, and Nikkei cuisine is one thing, what is your own Jordan Sclair food philosophy? And 
what does food mean to you other than feeding people? Yeah, I mean, I, I have food philosophy and what food means to me. I can't really say if you're asking me which, what style of food I make as in a cuisine because at the moment my job is a development chef. So whatever, yep. whenever Kurt travels or has ideas to launch new restaurants, he's, he takes me, oh, you've got to come and try this, this small restaurant run by the grandma in somewhere discreet in Mykonos or Greece with no one right. knows about and it's the best food I ever had and he takes me there so we have all different concepts and my job is to develop them all but personally my philosophy on food is as per my logo says pure, pure taste. taste yeah and pure not just meaning uh, some people interpret it as clean yeah it, it means pure taste mean only taste pure as in only and um, my main concern and first thought always about food and it doesn't have to be how long it took to prepare or in a Michelin star restaurant because I've worked in three Michelin stars. We've know, got a so Ramsey. Yeah, I worked with, with Gordon Ramsay in Royal Hospital Road and it took hours and hours to prepare the food and roll it and twist it and do it and but cut, the effect cut was squares there. and cut this and that's all about yeah. presentation which I learned and I'm grateful yeah. for learning all those things but now I love street food. I love to go to Peru. I love Simple the markets. Things, I love way. barbecues. I love to eat with my fingers. I love to see people with food dripping down their arm as they <laughs> eat with that. So just enjoying. Pure just, taste. That's just, my philosophy of food. Pure taste. Yeah. Loads yeah. of coriander, loads of chili, loads yeah. of onion, loads of lime. I'd say your, your, your presentation is still pretty amazing, but you can tell that, that, that you're not putting uh, hours and hours for no. thinking the how to present it. Yeah, the presentation is coming just because of the rules of Nikkei Cuisine. Yeah. We need to get the colors inside. We yeah. need to see textures and colors. It's important that Nikkei food and Chota Mate style food is really colorful. Yes. So the presentation comes itself. Before we even make the presentation, the list of ingredients that we have that fit the rules for that dish, we need that red, we need green, we need yellow, we right. need bright. So the presentation is going to do itself. I could pick it all up and put it on the plate. It's going to be like the most colorful plate in the world. Just so because the c c combination is always, is always right. Yeah, I don't need to sit in a kitchen meeting with chefs and sous chefs thinking, oh, for the next two hours, how are we going to do the presentation of this dish? No, that just comes. That's the end bit. Naturally. That's you know. the end bit. Yeah, but yeah. the taste is what we always talk about. Amazing. Pure taste. And the taste is great. We, we just tried a few dishes at uh, Chotamat a few minutes ago, and it's just exceptional. Um, now, Jordan, open arms. What is that representing? <laughs> I, can, I can see that on your logo, on yeah. Instagram, in it, pictures. Actually, with... that just happened, you know. Different people and, <coughs> sorry, different families or celebrities or personalities used to come. Yes. And they always see me as like this big giant, you know, when I'm <laughs> six foot two, six foot three. If you stand up next to me, I'm obviously like 140 kilos, you know, on a good day. So, but I'm really welcoming. I, I like to have open arms. I've heard smile. that about you. I, love, yes. I have a passion to develop people. I have a passion to develop all the chefs that work with me. I don't want to, I don't use techniques of like pointing the fingers and you do this. I'm more like, how can we improve Help you to get better it? rather and than finding the same. I'm happy when all the customers come. I'm, I'm very approachable. Yeah. So, I'm open arms. Just so you know that, that, that what you just said about being open to, to people and wanting to develop talents, this is pretty much what I've heard from talking to your work colleagues. Oh, really? You've been, asked, you've been, yeah, I've been spied yeah. on, yeah. That's, that's what my dream. You know, who, who do I remember most in my life? When people who helped up? you. People who taught you stuff. People to who taught you something. developed you. You yeah, remember yeah. your parents. I remember the first person who taught me how to fillet fish yeah, yeah. today. You know, his name was yeah, yeah. David. And yeah, yeah. I was 16 years old at the Savoy. Uh, when, when Michael cooked that Iberico Pressa I told you about, that changed my whole perspective on, on cooking. Forever. I'm going to remember him forever and I changed the way I cook. It just helped me for my whole life. Yeah, yeah. you're 100% right. So that's what Jordan Open Arms is. Yes. Everybody can come, everyone's welcome. <laughs> and it's, it, the, the picture is always at the end of a good meal. The picture's never taken at the beginning. So at the end of a meal, it's like, hey, we did a great meal. Yeah, that's and it. Everyone's that's in it. the picture. That's, that's it. it. And I'm the Daddy Jordan. And <laughs> <laughs> um, now, yeah, you just mentioned uh, you had experience at uh, Gordon Ramsay restaurant in uh, in an interview um, with, I think, uh, Bibi Roy. You yeah. mentioned that you've learned how to work very hard with Gordon Ramsay. Yeah. 
you mentioned uh, amazing consistency and working with uh, the world's best uh, product and um, also precision, yes. uh, working at Noble. Now you're working with Kurt very closely. Yeah. Um, what is it that inspires you in him the most and what are the key things you have learned from him? Nobody, if you can name it. I can tell you, very, <laughs> these answers are very easy because it's genuine. All right. Nobody loves food more than Kurt. Nobody loves flavor more than Kurt and nobody loves to eat more than Kurt. So when you combine all that and he brings you on these journeys, who, who ever gave me the opportunity before growing as a chef? You want to learn about food, you need to open a book, read a cookbook, look at Google, forget about it. Go and eat. Kurt wants to show me food. He calls me up. What are you doing? I just booked a ticket. We're going to New York. What are you doing? We're going to go to, <laughs> in, in one week, we went to Italy, France, Barcelona, um, Copenhagen. In one week, we went yeah. to all these places just eating. Look at this. You don't look like you are. I am. <laughs> Trust me. Because uh, you were saying in one of the interviews, I can't remember which one it was, that, that during the day from like 8 a.m. since you left the hotel until 1 in the night, you've eaten in like 20 places. And, and with Kurt. With, with yeah, Kurt, yeah. yeah. We do. We, we travel. We, when we go away and we travel, it's, it's fun and exciting, but it's business. Yeah. He's going for a reason. Of so course. Before he goes, he studies all the restaurants that he goes around. He There's makes, a planning place. He and, makes and huge lists. He books yeah. them all. And I tell you what happened once was when we had that trip, when, when you, which you're referring to, mm. when we were in multiple restaurants in the same day yeah. because we were only in Rome for that amount of time all right. or Milan. All right. So that was we before was you Milan, opened Fucina. Milan. Yeah. Okay. That was when we was in Milan and we were studying actually fish concepts. We was looking around for fish. And then we had connecting flights every day that took us to another country. And wow. we had to eat in those <laughs> restaurants. He had to get the hire car, fly to that restaurant, you know, as fast as he could in the car, eat there, eat there, go to the airport, eat there, eat there, go to the airport. And then we nearly missed the flight halfway through, which means all of our restaurants, the whole week's plan would have gone, you know. To, and to, everything was booked in. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. You mustn't do that. But you so made it. <laughs> that was when it. me and Kurt, you would have seen two guys running around the airport running around like this, trying to catch our flight. At least you've lost some calories usually yeah. after the whole, well, we, the whole well, Luckily, we made the flight and we, we, we had all the experiences that we needed to have. Amazing. But I tell you, I've traveled more with Kurt than I have with all of my family put together. I, I, I can imagine if, if he's so passionate about trying different mm -hmm. cuisines and obviously you need that for business. Amazing. Um, can I ask you now, Blackwell, Chotomate, uh, Fucina, Panetteria, each one is different concept. And how do you find developing menus for such broad range of cuisines? I love it. You love it? Yeah. Because Again, I mean, if we didn't have such broad cuisines, I wouldn't get to, to travel to such a broad selection of countries with Kurt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we travel around. We, we, you know, I've got a, a team of a lot of chefs behind us now. So I have fantastic uh, head chef at Facina, Andrea Colaco. Andrea Colaco. Yeah, he's been with us for about the last three years. Okay. He's worked in all the restaurants. So he is Italian, but he knows all of our styles. So me and him work really closely together. Right. And he understands now about how the business, how we run things and how things will work. But I put something in there and he'll be like, oh, let's twist it to this because this is a bit more Italian. And then I'll be like, oh, what if we do it like this because it's Italian, but we're in London. So we, we work together as That's a how we get every perfection. restaurant. Yeah. yeah I've got, in, in every restaurant, there's... I mean, just between, just between the three or four head chefs that are with me in each yeah. restaurant, if you add them together, the, the amount of years that they've been with me are probably equals easily to about 30 years. Uh, Michael's but, been with you Michael's here. Michael's been with me since before he could walk. Since you've been 16, I think that's, that's where you... Since college. That's, yes. We went to college together and we, we cooked on the same stoves together as partners. We went mm. our own ways and now we're partners again. Yeah, what yeah, a dream. Yeah. For the, 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 it's because you opened Chotomate with him. Yep. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. were open before. We, we worked on Chotomate for about between five, six, seven months before yeah. we opened, developing the menu, developing the yeah, dishes, yeah. and still people coming and raving about it. You have to come and try Chota if you haven't. An amazing restaurant. Uh, talking about uh, Michael Paul, apparently you're saying that he is the chef that inspires you the most. For, yeah. Yeah. He's, he, his, that's what I said. When we started at college, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I went one way, I went the Asian way, and he went one way. Yeah. He loved to do, you know, the El Bulli style food, the European cuisine. Sure. He, Mediterranean. He was, I, I used to, you know, we used to follow each other on Facebook. 
for the whole period of time when we when we didn't work with each other. And I could see all the things he was liking and interested in, and very much El Bully cuisine, and you know, right. real good taste of um, cooking juice slowly right. with bones, and yeah. spending a lot of time with cooking. So when we got back together, I think I inspired him a lot because he had to like this. He had he had to be a blank page. He it was to, brand new for him. He had to learn all about Japanese food yeah. and Nikkei cuisine. You know, we developed Nikkei cuisine together, but he had to learn first about Japanese food, which is everything I learned before in my career. Right. He had to learn. But during those times, he would look at it from a different set of eyes. He was a fantastic head chef, mm. but he wasn't looking at it in an Asian way, and I only was. So then when he said, well, why don't we do this and do that? And do he that? could I was bring like, up, wow, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just no, a fresh idea. The just salad he put on and the presentations deal. and the, the, the different stuff that, that fit to the concept. And sure. And made then it different. It was, that's why who, who could inspire me more than working together with him yeah. every day for six or seven months just developing this menu alone? How, how can anyone you know, inspire and, me and more? And the, the effect is crazy. I've been here with, 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 with the missus and, and just completely mind blown. Um, if you were to take uh, Foodies on a journey uh, through your work, which restaurant would you recommend them to go to, go to first? Chotamate, Black Row, Fucina, Panetteria? Um, it's a tough question to decide I, uh, <laughs> which one first. Because the answer would be, if you could go to all of them at the same time, that would be you know, great. If you could go all, with Kurt. They're I all guess. equally as great as each other. but. I think, you know, Chotto Mate is established. It's been here nearly five years now. We're opening in Miami in January. Then we're going to open in Toronto. I think you've got to get in here. In Toronto? Yeah, we're going to be open in Toronto, Mykonos next year. You are a busy man. You've got to get in here <laughs> as, if you haven't been to Chotto, you're probably okay. one of the last okay. few people that have not been in the UK to Chotto yes. yet. Yes, yes, yes. You know, we're doing a thousand covers here on a Saturday night for one yeah. night. Yeah. It's, yeah. Lots of people have been so, here. You've got to do that first, I think. People come to Chotomate, right, this yeah. weekend. Book quick. Um, now, um, staff shortages. Obviously, you're going through tough times. The whole industry is yeah. struggling because people just don't want to, want to come to work and uh, be a chef. Why is it, do you think? Um, the, we lost, I think, a lot of European chefs, uh, which I found out the hard way with opening two Italian sites that they're not so keen on coming anymore and Italians, pounds, Ita yeah, and yeah. sending back to Italy pounds. Because life, life change is it quite to euros, costly. Yeah. You don't get much anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You used to get double the amount almost. Yes, sure, sure. So a lot of the people spoke to me, look, you know, I love to work with you, but it's not, you know, we came here originally to save up money, to learn, to work in London, see what it's like, but now the money we're sending back is not the same value. So that, that's sure. hit the um, industry a lot regarding... Finance is, is a key, key, key thing. Yeah. Exchange, sure. Yeah, so there is a staff shortages. Yeah. And that's why in our company, you know, we're very lucky and we're in a position where we can look after our staff really well. Because you grow constantly, you can move yeah, people around not, not and learn them. Financially, but yeah, the exactly. opportunities to move around. But exactly. the way we communicate and treat with them is very much starts from the top. How Kurt likes to manage the business and he's in the meetings with me. It goes across. And we, we else. flow that through and everyone yeah. communicates with a higher respect and really much more appreciation all the way down to the lowest position yeah, in the yeah, yeah. And, and then we, we retain and keep our staff and pe people will think twice before before they they, they resign yeah, yeah or they yeah. resign and pull back one week later well i don't know what happened, it wasn't that easy in yeah, fact yeah, to to come back. <laughs> so yeah it's that's why we develop a lot of people we put a lot of time and effort into okay. developing the team um so now uh, the, the the last question uh, hopefully few chefs are watching at the moment Tell them why they should come and work with you, with, with Michael. Well, if they haven't been persuaded already by hearing that <laughs> we're traveling, we're doing new cuisine, we're doing modern stuff, we love to, to teach and develop you. We'll my dream is to see other people successful. That's how I look at everyone. Everyone who comes and works for me, with me, and, and who's employed, I say, you will be leaving this company if everything goes to plan, <laughs> a hell of a lot, you know, with a lot more value to yourself, with a lot more knowledge, you'll, you will leave. There'll be a real reason for you to leave. You're leaving to do something huge because of the journey we've taken you up on. Yeah. You know, or you're leaving because you're being poached. People want you. Yes. So if anyone has uh, any questions why they should come or shouldn't to work with Jordan, you just heard the answers. Yeah. Uh, 
Thank you very much. Thank you, Jordan. Thank you very much. See you soon. Take care.